YouTube, YouTube, YouTube was good. It's your boy Faye Nice Good back with another one. I know it's been a minute, but I'm here. So today I'm gonna show y'all how to go from this. She had a lot of hair. She came in, she wanted to chop it off. Uh, she's a, a, a fellow YouTuber herself, Special K. I'm a tag her in this video, but I couldn't believe it, man. I, I, I didn't think she was the, the client that was that was scheduled. When I when I seen her, I was like, yo, it was you, you, you cutting your hair off? And she wanted to do something different. So this is how I came out. This is the final result. Uh, came out dope. I did like a, a real low, low, low like drop fade um, with the curly top. Uh, yeah, she loved it. I loved it. Uh, we both wanted to document it. So um, right here, I had chopped all her hair down with a six guard, uh, even all around, and then I washed it. Um, I didn't record myself cutting it down with the six guard, but I just cut it even all over with a six guard and then washed it so that it could go to its natural state. After somebody has had hair for a long time, you want to cut it down and then wash it so it can like curl back up. You don't want to be dealing with straight, really straight, spiky hair. But so uh, this wasn't so much a tutorial as it was me just recording myself um, doing a transformation. But I still, you know, explain what I'm doing. I started off right here with the uh, 3 16th guard and just removed some of the bulk, some of the weight um, around the area that I was going to fade just cleared it up some, you know, clear that workspace so that you can really get busy um, with the fade. So did that all the way around with the 316th guard and then I'm gonna start fading uh, afterwards. So right here, I got my magic clips open with no guard, I kept the, the first guy line really low. I didn't want it to look like a ball fade um, and I didn't want the, the fade to be too high. I just wanted to keep it real low. I just wanted some type of transition, you know, from the bottom of the hair going up to the top of the hair. So uh, I just did my first guy line open so that it wouldn't be bald, but you would see some type of transition. And I did that all the way around. Um, keeping the guy line real low, you know. The first guy line determines everything with the fade, so uh, you always gotta be conscious of where you're putting that very first guy line, because it's very important. So right here, I got my 3 16th guard on, and I'm going with the grain. This is very important in fading when you take your 3 16th guard and you go with the grain, um, it's removing bulk, but at the same time, it's another form of blending. Um, going with the grain, you're not gonna create a line as much as you are if you're going against the grain, you're fading upwards. So I just chopped down some of that hair and it's gonna be a nice transition, you know, from the top of her hair to where I'm about to be fading at. So I'll remove some of that weight, but I'm going with the grain so that it'll be easier to blend and it's going to look a lot nicer. Uh, I do this with all my fades, whether I do it after I made my first two guidelines or before. It's just a good way to transition that hair. So you always want to try this, knocking down the bolt, going with the grain. And with the grain is, you know, with the, the way the hair grows, the pattern of the hair. Um, so right here, I got my one guard on open and I'm just going to flick up um, and flick out that, that first guy line I made. And again, since I removed some of that hair with 3 16th, um, the step before this, it's a lot clearer, clearer. It's a clear workspace for me to fade and remove that line easy and make a transition easy. So. Uh, what I do, I got it open, flick up on that line, and then I'm gonna close it up some, you know, and then close it up some more until that line is gone. Uh, I know in other previous videos, I used the one and then I used the, uh, the half guard, but you can also remove lines with just the one guard. Um, 
you know, just take your time and, and slowly work that line out. Like I said, starting open and then closing it up a little bit more to, to remove that guy line, as you'll see that I'm doing here. See, I'm going against the grain, against the way her hair grows. On that side, her hair grows towards the back. It grows like towards the back of her head, so that's why I was flicking forward towards the front of her head, because I'm going against the grain to, to fade those hairs out. You gotta look at the pattern of the hair and, and, and flick opposite of how they're growing. You can even see when I comb the hair, I'm kind of combing it backwards, because that's the way her hair is naturally growing and I'm cutting it forward so I can really fade those hairs out. And uh, I just closed the guard up, so I'm gonna close the lever up. And you just gotta use your discretion, man. You close it up halfway, flick it out some more, Close it up a little more, flick it out some more. Just keep closing it until you slowly remove that line. And just keep in mind that you don't want to go up too high when you start to close the lever. Because if you start going up too high, you're going to take your fade higher. And I wanted to keep this fade low, so I kept the I kept the, the clippers low. I just stayed right at that line. I just kept the target as the line, and I wanted to remove that. So I stayed right there at that line. I didn't go up too high. That's how you keep your fades where you want them. You know what I'm saying? If, you, if you're moving too fast and flicking up all highs, you're gonna take your fade higher. You might make a new line, and now you gotta take the fade higher than what you wanted to. And it's a whole lot of stuff you just don't wanna go through. So take your time and stay right there at that guy line and just, you know, slowly remove it. So I got the 316th back. Um, I have it open, and this is just providing some more gradiency. I'm kind of just flicking out at the top of the fade um, so that it transitions real well. You'll see um, after I do this step, I'm gonna shape it up with the clippers without a guard on it, but um, this is the last guard I'm gonna use. So all I needed was, you know, no guard, one guard, and a 3 16th guard. So I used two guards total to you know achieve this fade and everything else is just you know shaping shaping without a guard on it so So yeah, right here, I'm, I'm shaping, but I'm right at the top of that fade. You can kind of see the, the line, um, the last guy line I made. I'm, I'm kind of removing that without the guard. So I'm going right up on those hairs, but I'm not touching the actual the client's actual head. I'm just going right up on the hairs. I'm just trimming them up, you know, to, to remove that line. You will see once I get closer and once I continue to shape, you'll see how it comes out. But this is a good way, like I said, to, to keep the fade low. I'm not adding any more guards. I'm not taking it up any higher. This that that's the last step as far as guards go. So you can see it better now at this angle. Just going and flicking them hairs up. I'm being very careful, you know, you don't want to cut a chunk out of the hair when you're dealing without a guard on it. I, I love the masters for shaping hair. They, they shape up the hair really good.
So I just continue to shape it all around. And then right here, I'm gonna line it up. When you do the line up, it gives you an idea of how that fade really is looking. You know, sometimes you can't get a good idea of how your fade is looking until you line it up. Um, you line it up, it's, it's gonna make everything make sense. And then you can see, you know, more mistakes that you might need to go in and correct after you line it up. So just because you see me lining it up or even if you wanna, you know, line the client's hair up, that doesn't mean that you're done with the fade. A lot of times I line up, you know, when I feel like I'm almost done with the fade so I can see what's really standing out, what mistakes I need to correct and go in after I don't line the client up. Here I'm just gonna start drawing a design with the clippers. She already had a design in mind that she showed me. Um, she showed me the picture, I looked at it, and then you know, I went in and did my own thing. Um, with designs, you know you gotta have a steady hand. That's very important to have a steady hand, have some good um, sharp liners that can cut through those here and give you a real crispy line. And then also, I always razor it. Uh, so, you know, you want to really practice on your razor game because that really makes the, the design stand out a lot more. So I did it with the uh, T outliners first and I'm going back over it with the slim lines um, just to make the line a little wider and, and to make sure I, I got all those hairs. With, when you're making parts and designs, you want to make sure you really cut all the hairs that's like right around that design because you don't want them to brush their hair or lay down and go to sleep and then there's hairs that you didn't cut and it's not making the part look fresh anymore so and then i go over it with the razor you know to really make sure i clean up all those hairs you know i razor it some and i comb some and i go back over it you got to really do all this to make the designs pop then I wet the uh, wet the hair with the with the water. Just spray some water in it, to, uh, make it a little bit more manageable. And then I sponge it. And you can see the cut is really coming along now. I put some fibers on the on the on the part just to make it pop a little more. And yeah, that was pretty much um pretty much the process for this cut you can see after the fibers and after the sponge everything starts to make sense the cut starts to look fire you know and then razor in it just takes it to another level you know it's, it's a process you got to trust the process I kind of don't like clients to see you know the haircut while I'm doing it because sometimes they like to ask questions are you going to fix this are you going to do that and it's like you got to wait until the final product but if you liked the video, enjoyed it, please share it, like it, subscribe, oh, and all that. You like it? Yes! Ah! Mm. Oh my god. You look so cute. That is wow. I give you mercy good at the back and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, man, I can't go do it. Thank you. This is